just want to remind you, if you don't have the church app, it's on the church app. You can just go to notes on the church app if you want the digital notes. Uh, and you can fill them out on your phone. Or you can just scan that QR code, and it should pull it up on a web browser on your phone. Just want to remind you that our theme this week is Purpose Amplified. Purpose Amplify, uh, the word Amplify just means to show or to demonstrate, uh, really help us to, that we ought to be showing our purpose. People ought to know uh, that we have a purpose in life and what we're doing. And so, with that being said, I want you to turn, if you would, to Philippians chapter 1, Philippians chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 11. While you're finding that, I'm going to bow my head in just a moment of prayer. Lord, I just come before you right now, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, and thank you. I thank you, oh God, for this opportunity you've given us. Lord, I pray, oh Heavenly Master, that you would have mercy on us. Lord, give us the wisdom. Help us to see it like you see it. Help us to do it the way you would have it to be done. Lord, we pray today, oh God, that you would speak to our hearts, that we would leave here different, uh, not just a temporary different but a permanent difference, that we would leave here better, that we would leave here more energized, oh God, to be about your business. And Lord, we pray, oh heavenly master, if there's anyone in the building and don't know you and a partner of their sin, we pray for their salvation. We pray that they would hear you, that they would surrender to you, and that they would allow you to have your way. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you would do that now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 to 11, these words are recorded there. Paul and Timothy, bondservants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you, all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart. Inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of grace. For God is my witness how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that you, your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruit, fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. This morning, my brothers and sisters, if you allow me to use the subject, I just want to use this simple subject, just purpose demonstrated. And basically, I've just said it, is that we want to demonstrate that we really have purpose. That God has given us a purpose and that we are not just saying we have a purpose, but we are really showing we have a purpose. And it ought to show up. It's like that song, that old gospel song we used to sing, Jesus is a light that shineth in me, that shineth in me. And they said he'll show up in me. It'll show up in the way I walk. It'll show up in the way I talk. It'll show up in the way I live. So this morning, what I want to do is just basically help you to see, well, how in the world, preacher, can I really demonstrate to those that are within my sphere of influence that I have purpose, that God is glorified when they see in me this Christ-centered purpose. Well, I'm so glad that you're here this morning because the first thing I want you to understand is that you have to have the right perception. It, it's really demonstrated when you have the right perception. So it's in your perception when, when, when it's how you see yourself. 
you know, it's bad. It's bad, my brothers and sisters. But sometimes we see ourselves totally different than the way the Bible sees us. And this morning, I know it should not be a shock, but I want you to understand that, that even Paul this morning said, hey, I see myself as a slave. He said he saw himself as a slave. Well, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, let's go back and look at verse 1. Look what he says there. He says, Paul and Timothy, and y'all see it there? He says, bond servants of Jesus Christ. Paul identified himself as a bond servant of Jesus Christ. Well, that word bond ser servant or bond servant that is actually, it means slave. It's a slave is one who is up in, in a permanent relation of servitude to someone else. So it is seen in, in the fact that the subordinate or the person who's lesser uh, uh, is uh, all wrapped up in the wheel of the one who's greater or beyond them. And so what does this say? This is really saying that Paul says, well, it ain't what I want because I'm a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about his will, not my will. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I'm just wondering this morning, well, when, when, are you totally consumed in the will of the Lord Jesus Christ? Is your will, what you want, your desires, your wishes, are they consumed or are they being engulfed by the will of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, you'll be like Jesus who was in the Garden of Gethsemane, who was getting ready to fulfill the will of his father, who was getting ready to go to the cross in order to pay the penalty for our sins. And he thought about that bitter cup that was going to come. And he said, well, I, I, Lord, if there's another way, you know, uh, you know, he says, you know, if there's another way, do it. But then he says, hold up, not my will, but thine will be done. Do you see yourself as in servitude to the Lord God Almighty? That I really serve him. I'm a slave of my master, God Almighty. And it's not what I want. Well, let me put it to you in, in, in some military terms. The, the book private don't tell the general what to do. Somewhere along the line, we didn't got this idea that we tell God what we want, and it ain't his will that needs to be done. It's our will. And so we ought to make sure that we have the right perception, that we see ourselves the way God wants us to see ourselves, and that is I'm a slave of the Lord God Almighty. But not only that, but then look what else he says. He says, well, Paul, Paul says, me and Timothy, we're bond servants of Jesus Christ. But then he not only says that, but he says, we're also saints. He said, we're also saints. He says, look what he says at the rest of it. He says, look, I'm writing to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and deacons. That, that word saint, it really means to be set apart. It means to be set apart exclusively for the service of God. I've been set apart. That's what it means when I'm a saint. You say, are you a saint? Yes, that means that it's not the work that I'm trying to do. I've been set aside for the service of God, to be used in his service. It, you know, um, let, me, let me just ask you all a question just, just by way of illustration. Do everybody sleep in your bedroom? Oh, oh that, 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 that primary suite at your house has been set aside for your use. Uh, everybody don't just go in there talking about getting on your bed, huh? unless you got Goldilocks and showed up and been eating your portraits and been sleep, sitting in your chair, sleeping. He, look, 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 we understand about things being set aside. I uh, meant when me and Stacy first got married, uh, I, I, I like, you know, I'm very particular with certain things. I, I, I like things a certain way. I don't want you pushing my toothpaste in the middle. Don't, don't push my toothpaste in the middle. I like to push it from the bottom, and, and I want it to be nice and, and straight, and, and I, that's just the way I am. And I remember communicating this with my father. I said, man, Stacy, just pissing the toothpaste. Man, it's just, you know. And he said, son, buy another tube of toothpaste. 
So Stacy got her own tube of toothpaste. And I got my own tube of toothpaste. And every now and then, I'll go over there to hers and push it. Straighten it up. Uh, we, we, we were out. We was at the hotel uh, uh, a, few, uh, uh, a few days ago. And, and, and they said, you know what? I forgot my toothpaste. Where your toothpaste? I said, I knew it. I knew it. I knew somebody had been pushing my toothpaste. In the middle. The, the thing is, is that I have a tube of toothpaste that's been set apart for my service. You, you get what I'm saying? And if you've been born again, huh, you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, you ain't set aside to do your own stuff. You've been set aside to work and to operate the way the master wants you to use you. Huh? Y'all yeah, get that? And so, what's your perception? Do you see yourself as a slave, as a servant, as a saint of God, one who has been set aside so he can use you? Another way the Bible says, he says, hey, I am fit for the master's use. Huh? I need to be the best I can be so God can use me the way he really want to use me. Huh, you ever tried to use a screwdriver that it was all bent up on the end? You'd be like, man, this thing's so frustrating. Boy, I just wonder how frustrated God is when he's trying to use us and we bent up on the end. Huh, you a knife that's dull, can't cut nothing. Huh? I, you're just wondering how in the world, it, how frustrated could God be with me? Because I'm not fit, set aside. Huh? Have you been loaning yourself out? Have you been loaning yourself out? You, you, you supposed to be God's tool, and you've been loaning yourself out to others. Well, what's the name said they needed me? Well, the Lord is in need of workers to till his field. Huh? Can he count? On you. So first is your perception. Second is your praise. Huh? You going to demonstrate it? You want to show it? It's shown in how you see yourself, your perception of yourself. But it's also shown in your praise. What do you mean? Well, look, look what Paul did. First of all, he, he, he focused his praise on the people of God. You all see it there? In verse 3, he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Look around the building. Is that what you did? Every time you see Sister Ruth Miller, thank God. Every time you see Adela Hardiman, thank you, Lord. Every time I just think about Brother Charles Nora, Nora I just thank God for it. Huh? You, you, you know, you, you, you are thankful to the God. That's what he says. That I thank my God upon every, every time I think about the saints, every time I think about my brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, I thank God. Every time I remember you. Huh? Look what he says here. He says, look, there's thanksgiving. He says, and then verse, look what he says in verse 4. He says, Always in every prayer of mine, make a request for you all with joy. Talking about the supplication. He said, not only every time I think of you, but guess what? I don't just stop there, but I, with joy in my heart, I just bring my request to the Lord on your behalf. He stands in the gap. Oh, my goodness. When I was looking at this, I was like, oh, Lord, I got work to do. Lord, I got work to do. Because sometimes when I think of folk, I think about the saints, I'm not thanking God. Huh? I'm, I, I'm not going to stand here like I'm perfect. I'm not going to stand here like all of us got work to do. Huh? 
I'm not saying I'm thinking evil about you. I'm not saying I'm thinking bad about you. I'm not saying I'm thinking that I'm sad and, and looking at your disappointment. But am I really thanking God for you as a member of the body of Christ? Oh, we got work to do. We got work to do. He says every time. He says always in every prayer of mine. He says every time I go to pray, guess what I'm doing? Oh, man, sometimes we ain't thinking about nobody but ourselves. We ain't thinking about, look, Lord, uh, you know, let me let me pray for Sammy and his, his daughter that's, that's missing. Let me, let me pray for the ones who, who have cancer here at the church. Let me be praying for those uh, that, that are struggling or the sometimers or the, uh, those that are careless and unconcerned. I, I'm asking God to stand on their behalf. Is, is that what I'm doing or am I spending a whole lot of time instead of praising God? We on the job complaining about the folk at the church. Oh, what kind of witness is that? Paul said that's not. See, if you want to demonstrate that you have purpose, you want to demonstrate that the purpose that God has given us to be, that we are in whatever we do in word or in deed, we're doing it all in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm fulfilling that purpose. It ought to show up in your praise to God that you have fond memories of your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. That's why I say we got to spend time together, y'all. We need to really get to know each other. Sometimes Satan will get in there and have you assuming a whole lot of stuff about folk. I even heard members here say, I thought she was this way until we spent some time together. I had it all wrong. And sometimes we get stuff all wrong because we are not really working to come together. So first, in my praise when it comes to the people of God, but then the praise for the partnership. My praise when it comes to the partnership. He says, not only that, he says, in the partnership, look what he says in verse 5. He says, for your fellowship, your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. He's saying, hold up, you are a partaker of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you heard the good news, you accepted the good news, you received this good news, you heard about that Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. You heard about it. You accepted it because you realize I'm lost and I need to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ so that he can change and rearrange and give me a new way of walking, a new way of talking, a new outlook on life. And so, therefore, what happened in your life, you were moved out of sin into salvation. You were moved out of corruption into Christ. You were moved from perplexity into peace, from despair into delight. You were moved out of grief into gladness because you gave your life to him. And Paul is saying, man, I'm so thankful for this partnership. I, you, you, you know, you know, the thing about it is the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that two is better than one. He said, look, if you're by yourself and you fall in a ditch, you ain't got no help. But guess what? I ain't in this by myself. Huh? Because we have a partnership. We're in this together. And, and y'all know, y'all know, y'all know the song that we sing or the, 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 the chant that we say. Together we stand. Divided we're going to fall. We ought to be tighter than pantyhose that's two sizes small. See, we together. And see, the trick of the enemy is to try to tell you you don't need nobody. That you're in the thing by yourself and you, you don't need no help. You don't need none of that. I'm here to tell you God will get you to the point where you'll realize you need help. And folk you didn't want to call, folk you didn't want to help you, they'll have to come help you. Just so God will prove to you that your way of thinking ain't the right way of thinking. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you a lot of times we sing in songs that don't even line up with scripture. As long as I got King Jesus, I don't need the rest of y'all. Jesus got a body, and the body is the church. 
And he uses our hands to hug you. He uses our voices in order to encourage you. He uses us to help each other. We got to keep that in mind, my brothers and sisters. We are here for each other. But then not only did he praise them for the partnership and praise the people of God, but he praised the progression. Y'all see that in verse 6? The progression. Don't miss it. The verse, in verse 6 he says, as being confident of this very thing. Now, we might have to work on this. He said, because I'm persuaded. That's what the word confidence. He uses that also in, in, in Romans chapter uh, 8 and verse 30. He said, and I am persuaded that neither death nor life. That same word. He says, I'm confident of this. I'm, I'm persuaded in this that God who started a good work in you, who saved you, who raised you, guess what he going to do? He going to complete it. He, he going to finish what he started. Oh, isn't that bad when we start saying, ain't no help for you. Ain't no help for you. Hold up. You not thanking God that I know that there's going to be a progression that God who started this work in you is going to bring it to its completion? You know, sometimes we have what people call self-fulfilling prophecies. Because you think so bad and think so worse of all of other people that that's all you can see. You, they could be doing other stuff well, but you can't see it. All you can see is the bad because that's all you're focusing on. Matter of fact, the bad might be 5%. And they got 95% good, but you can't see the 95. Because all you can see is that 5%. Because that's what you're focusing on. Are you focusing on that God is at work? That God is moving in other directions? Maybe not the stuff you're looking at, but you see him working other places. But you ain't won't look. All you're thinking about is what you want to see. Paul said, hold up. Now, he knew these folk wasn't perfect. He knew these people wasn't all God wanted them to be. But guess what? He was thanking God. Because he was confident that what God started, God going to finish it. Oh, if we run around here telling each other you'll never be nothing, that let me know you ain't thanking God that he going to finish what he started. <laughs> huh? You, you ain't going to be no more than what you are right now. Hold up. You, you, you don't thank God? Going to finish what he started? You're not confident? You're not persuaded? Your mind is fixed? Your heart is made up that you're going to do it, that God going to do exactly what he said? So it's seen in our praise. It's seen in our perception. But third, y'all, it's seen in your passion. In your passion, look what he says in verse 7 there. He says, hold up, I want you to see this just as it is right for me to think this of you all. He says that God going to complete it. He says, it's right for me to think that. He says, because what? I have you where? In my heart. He said, I got you here. I got you in my heart in as much as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. He says, look here, you in my heart. And although I'm in prison right now writing to you, that ought to show you that you in my heart. Huh, a lot of times, you know, let's just say you in jail. You ain't thinking about writing to encourage other people because you in jail. And that's not normal. But Paul is in jail trying to encourage his fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't worry about where I am. Keep your eye on the Lord. Oh, I wonder when we're going through, is that what's coming out of us? That we're encouraging others to keep their eye on the Lord. Man, I remember calling Sister Rosa B. I was going to call her. I said, man, I'm going to call so I can encourage Sister Rosa B. I'm, I'm going to call her. And, man, I got to talk. And I said, man, how you doing? She said, I'm doing fine. She said, man, next thing I know, she was like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Well, you've been good to me. I was like, hold up. She on her bed of affliction. 
she, she can't get up on her own. She, I mean, she's shouting on the phone, thanking God, and I got two good legs. And I wasn't thinking them. I, I got two good arms, and I wasn't thinking them. I, I don't have rheumatoid arthritis that, that crippled my body. But she was thanking God. Even in her state, she still get on prayer lines. She's still doing whatever she can do for the kingdom. And many of us have been encouraged by her devotion, by her dedication. To keep on, keeping on, even in spite of. And sometimes with us, a fingernail will keep us from doing what thus said the Lord. Paul says, it's only right. He says, you're in my heart. You're, you're my passion because I want to see what God started. I want to see him do it. He, I want him to complete it. He says, look here. So when it comes to these chains, don't worry about my chains. And when it comes to that, I am here for you because you're in my heart. And you are all partakers with me of grace. Look what he says in verse 8. For God is my witness. How greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. Look around the building. Are these folk your passion? Are you passionate? Come on, don't, now don't lie to yourself. Don't just tell the truth and say, now we don't shame the devil. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister Harris. So we don't say this because he ain't shame. But tell the truth. Because we'll lie to ourselves and act like we're something when we're not. Because what you find yourself doing is really what your passion is. Huh? It's, it's time for Bible study and you find yourself going to the casino. We know what your passion is. It sure ain't God's word. It sure ain't God's people. Huh? You find yourself, you want to do everything else, but when it comes to stuff here, I ain't, mm -mm, I can't do that. I ain't, I ain't all that. I'm like, hold up. Where your passion? You're supposed to have a passion for the people of God. Look how Paul says it in another place. He says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, he says, so affectionate and longing for you. You were pleased to, we were pleased or well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our lives because you have become dear to us. Look around the room and say, can I say that? As I look around and look at the fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, can I say, oh, I, I'm willing not just to give you the gospel. Oh, look how he says it to the Corinthians. He says, I will verily, gladly spend, spend my life and be spent for your souls. But this is what happened with them. He says, though, the more abundantly I love you, the less you love me. Oh, my goodness. What a bad thing to happen. But guess what? It didn't stop Paul from keeping on loving them. Keep on trying to help them. Keep on trying to get them to where you want them to be. And so it's to show up in your perception. It's to show up in your praise. But look, number four, it's to show up in your prayers. Show up in your prayers. Look what he says here. He says, well, what was he praying? Well, for increasing love. He says, look here, I realize that I need your love to continue to increase. Look what he says in verse 9. He says, in this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in, the, in knowledge and all discernment. He says, hold up, hold up. Don't just think that, oh, I got a warm, fuzzy feeling. You know, see, I love them. He says, but abound more and more in what? Knowledge. And in all discernment. Look how he says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge you and exhort you in Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you have received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. He says that it ought to be growing. It ought to get better and better. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, he says, we are bound, we bound to thank God always for you, brethren, and it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you does what? It abounds toward each other. 
Jesus said, by this men will know that you're my disciples because you have love one for the other. My brothers and sisters, I'm just wondering, are we praying that the love among the brothers and sisters in Christ here at Holy Temple, that it increases? Or are we sowing discord among the brethren? He says, not only that, but he says, not only increase in love, but approve. Look what he says in verse 10 there. He says that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. He says, well, that word approve means to test. It means to examine. It means to scrutinize. He says, look, we, we need to test that. Matter of fact, Job says this in Job 12 and 11. He says, does not the ear test words and the mouth taste its food? He's saying, look, it, it ought to be simple to you that, look, we do some testing. We, we look at some things. He says in Job 34 and 3, he said, for the ear tests words as the palate tastes food. Fool, he said, we test, but how do we test it in Christ? Well, look at what he says this is in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. He says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may, there's that word again, may prove, that you may test, that you may scrutinize what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I need to be able to prove to the world that what God offering is the best thing for anybody who will accept it. I need to be showing this to the world. Look what he says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10. He says, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21, he says, test all things. Hold fast to what is good. He says, I need to test it. I need to scrutinize it. I need to show that what God has is worth it. Then look, the second part of that, he says, I need to pray, not only that you approve it, but I need to pray that you be sincere. Look at verse 10 again. He says that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Are you sincere in your service for God? Look what uh, Joshua said to them. Now, therefore, fear the Lord your God. Serve him. How? In sincerity. Don't fake it. Be sincere. Be genuine. Be real. Don't fake it. But you serve him with sincerity and in truth. And how does this show up? You put away that other stuff. You put away the other gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. You put away and you start to serve the Lord. Do what he want. Not what you want. He says this in Philippians chapter 1 verse 16. He says that the formal farmer Preach Christ for selfish ambition. So he says, even when it comes to uh, preachers who are preaching, he said they can do it and not be sincere. He says, farmer, preach Christ from selfish ambition and not sincerely. They're not sincere. So God is calling for us to even be sincere in our prayers. Because you can get the wrong motive in your prayer. Instead of giving adoration to God, you can move from there to just acting. You can move from supplication to just a show. You can move from petition to just a performance. You can move from calling on God to a curtain call. You can move from seeking him to just being seen by other folk. So he says, I'm praying that my brothers and sisters in Christ be sincere. But then the last part, he says, praying that they be directed. What do you mean? Look what he says in verse 11. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. What are you saying here? He says, well, I'm not just praying that, that these other things happen, but I'm praying that it sends them in a certain direction. And that direction is to be filled with the fruits of righteousness. He says this in Romans chapter 6, verse 22. He says, by now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to what? To holiness. It it directs you. It drives you to be what God wants you to be, to be the person God is calling for you to be. Not just say I'm holy, but be holy. 
See, sometimes the reason things ain't happening is because we ain't praying for each other. We're not really lifting up each other so circumstances can change, so difficulties can be dissolved, so discouragement can be defeated and obstacles can be overcome and questions can be answered and bitterness can be removed and victories can be gained and burdens can be lifted because we're not praying for each other. Sometimes we're just praying for ourselves. We ain't worried about nobody else. Oh, if I pull out your prayer journal and see well I see uh, uh, S S Jesse Cooper name on your prayer journal. Well, well, well I see her brother uh, uh, in law his name on the prayer journal. Huh? Well, 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 well I see brother Joe Vesta name. Huh? Well I see Ann Ann Sims name on, on your prayer journal. Well I see Corliss Beaver name on your prayer journal. Well, well I see Anita White's name. Huh? Well I see Marsha uh, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. On your prayer journal. How will I see Carrie Garrett? How will I see Patricia Faye Young? How, who will I see? Or will I just see me, 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 me? I need, I need, I need, I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't. I wonder where we get all this stuff from. I mean the good stuff. Because even in the garden, Jesus is praying, Father, make them one, even as we are one. Uh, Lord, I, I, I need you to do in them what you say you're going to do. And is that what we're looking at? That what God started in them. Huh, that they gave their life to him, that, Lord, I'm praying that you bring it to completion. That you keep on working. If, if by chance, Lord, it's something you want me to do, hear my Lord, send me. Oh, I think it'll have a difference in the way we walk. Come on, stand to your feet. The doors of the church is open. Maybe you're here today. And maybe you might be one of those people that said, hold up, hold up. I, I can't call myself a saint. I, I, I hadn't se been set apart for his service. That, uh, maybe you need to come and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ today. If that's you, I would not stay where I am. The Bible said the day you hear my voice. The Holy Spirit is knocking at your heart's door. You ought to come. Or maybe you're here today and said, well, preach, I'm saved. But, man, I, I got the wrong perception. Man, I, I've been praising the football team. I ain't been praising God for the people of God, for the saints. I, I, I've been cheering for the New Orleans saints. Ain't that right, John John? A anyway, that's his team. That's his team. But anyway, y'all know what I'm saying. You know, hey, hey, you know, maybe... My prayers have been selfish prayers. And they ain't been for the people. It's not been for what God really wants. It's been for something else. So as we get ready to pray, and after the end, we're going to dismiss and go quickly to our classes. Amen. <laughs> we pray that God would work in our hearts. Lord, we thank you right now. We give you praise and glory and honor. Lord, we ask your heavenly master that, Lord, we demonstrate that you've given us a purpose, just like you did your son. He said the work that you've given him, he must work the work of him that sent him while it is day. And when night cometh, no man can work. He said, I, my meat is to do the will of him who sent me. Lord, I pray. That what helps us to keep moving, to survive, is the bread of your word. And to carry it out, to live it out in our prayers, in our praise, in our perceptions, in our partnerships, in everything that we do. Lord, we thank you now. 
Lord, as we get ready to dismiss from this time of worship and move over into our classes as we respond to your word, Lord, have your way with us. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen.